on March 2, the mayor of Kherson, Ukraine, announced that it is the first major city to be taken by Russian forces since their invasion began last Thursday, February 24. Several other Ukrainian cities have endured heavy shelling in the days since the invasion began, while a million people are said to have fled their home country. Ukraine reports that more than 2,000 civilians have died in the last week of conflict, and the death toll among soldiers and volunteers on both sides continues to rise. In Russia, too, many citizens are feeling the indirect effects of a war waged by their president, Vladimir Putin, though many maintain that they are appalled, embarrassed, and hurt by the aggressive actions of their government. Thousands have queued at ATM in a bid to withdraw cash in the face of severe economic sanctions, while thousands more have been arrested for bravely opposing the war in public protests. The international community has also rallied in support of Ukraine, providing arms and aid, issuing official demands via the UN, cutting economic ties, and calling for peace on city streets. However, many have pointed out the double standards of the West's response, which has been particularly obvious in the racist angle of recent news coverage. On February 27, as Russian forces closed in on Kyiv, an ITV journalist echoed international fears for the Ukrainian citizens trapped in the city. Now the unthinkable has happened to them, she said. And this is not a developing third world nation. This is Europe. In the US, a February 26 CBS News segment saw a reporter declare, this isn't a place, with all due respect, like Iraq or Afghanistan, that has seen conflict raging for decades. This is a relatively civilized, relatively European city, one where you wouldn't expect that or hope that it's going to happen. On social media, these comments, and many, many more, have deservedly caused outrage, exhibiting the West's exceptionalist attitude toward the war in Europe, which has seen people with blue eyes and blonde hair lose their lives. Unfortunately, the West's biased response is also reflected in its material impact on those suffering the consequences of conflict in places such as Afghanistan or Yemen. Earlier this week, it was announced that Britain could welcome more than 200,000 Ukrainian refugees after easing its visa requirements, yet in recent years it's been named one of the worst places in Western Europe for refugees from beyond the continent's borders, with dismal approval rates for asylum seeker claims. Even people of color who live in Ukraine have reported shocking racism experienced during their attempts to find safety across the border. Of course, Ukraine is still in desperate need of aid amid the Russian invasion of its land. But this shouldn't come at the expense of those who Western states have often regarded with a detached sense of apathy or even complicity in their suffering. And this is a video of a Polish MP directly addressing Muslim refugees. Well, I've got a message for all illegals. If you don't want to be pushed back, if you don't want to be arrested, if you don't want to be shot, don't come to our borders. Do not come to the Polish border. Then you're safe. It's not us, it's not our police who came up to beat you up, to push you, or to ar ar arrest you. It's you who tried to break the law on our, our land. May I ask Mr. Czuczynski, uh, how many refugees has Poland taken? Zero. And you're proud of that? If you are asking me, if you're, if you are asking me about Muslim, uh, Muslims' illegal immigration, none, not even one, will come to Poland. Not even one, if it's illegal. We we took over two million Ukrainians who are working, who are peaceful in Poland. We will not receive even one Muslim because this is what we promised. But I asked this not about illegal failed. immigrants. I asked about refugees. And Junkov Juncker, the Commission President, says that you're racist. You sound proud of the fact that you haven't taken any refugees. Of course, because this is what our people are expecting from our government. That's number one. This is why our government was uh, elected. But this is why Poland is so safe. This is the, the, the reason why we have not even uh, one terrorist attack. Look at the streets in Poland. And we can be called populists, nationalists, racists, I don't care. I care about my family and about my country.